All right, what I'm showing you right now is the uh, core plug on this block. Now, you may call it a freeze plug, but that's not actually what it is. It's actually a core plug, and I'll go into that probably a little later on in the episode. But that plug right there has been leaking and is currently leaking. You can see the weep down the side of the block. It's actually left residue on the steering components as well, which led us into the idea that we're going to need to replace it. The former owner of the car said that the plug was bad and it needed to be redone, and I think he just didn't want to mess with it. Can't say we'll blame him, but we do because we can do an episode on it and show you guys how to replace one of those plugs in the block on your car while the thing's still in the car. All right, so we tried to pull the drain plug out of the block. Uh, it was not so happy trying to leave its home. So we're gonna leave that alone for now and not strip it out. We are going to poke a hole in that freeze plug and just drain the block through that. So uh, I'm gonna try it with my finger because I pressed on it and it started leaking more. So I think I can do it. So uh, I'm gonna try and not splash everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, that was really thin. There you go. Still, uh, it got me. Yep. Got Welcome me too. to working with coolant. Yeah. So, I'm gonna let this drain out a bit. Uh, gonna lower the car, take the radiator cap off, so it drains out with some gusto, and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Did you know that they're actually core plugs, not freeze plugs? Everybody calls them freeze plugs. Heck, even AutoZone in their stuff calls them freeze plugs. But in fact, they are actually core plugs. And what that means is they were openings in the sides of the block so that they could get the sand that they used in the sand casting method out of the block liners for where the water would go. And it would be a lot easier to clean them out than it would be trying to get them out through some small holes. They put large, maybe three, sometimes four holes in the sides of blocks, depending on what kind of block it is, so they can get all that junk out of there. Sometimes they don't do a real good job. Cam and I had a block, I think the one that we were working on with the 67, we pulled a lot of sand out of the inside of that block. Now either somebody was at the beach and did an emergency thing, or somebody at the factory didn't do a good enough job on the block that we were using then. In any case, core plugs not freeze plugs. But if you go to the store, order freeze plugs because they won't know what a core plug is. But now, you do. All right, so it's mostly done draining now. Um, so as you can see, it was very rusted. Um, I actually was able to push through it with my finger before using a screwdriver. But also one thing that I do not like about how this was installed is that this lip right here, the front lip of the core plug, freeze plug, whatever you call it, I prefer it to be beneath the chamfer of the block uh, and it is pretty proud. Now this might have actually been pushing out. Uh, once they start to rust, they kind of collapse on themselves and they can push out of that bore easy. So it's probably pushing out a little bit. It might not have been installed that way to begin with, but uh, it's no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and knock it out. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to have to cave it in and then pull it out or it's just gonna rip into pieces and I'm gonna grab it with pliers and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. So I'm gonna try and get on the bottom. And the real fun here is uh, gonna be trying to position myself in a way that I can see what I'm doing and you can also see what I'm doing. Right, back in. All right, so that was going to be kind of a pain. So I'm going to try another way of forced removal. And of course, that grease fitting is right in my way. 
So I'm trying to get behind the upper lip. Hey, damn, I'm good. It's almost like I've done this before. Oh, oh, look at that hole. So, uh, yeah, this is exactly what Jeff was talking about a second ago, but this is mostly from the looks of it. Uh, nope, that is, that is all sand. Yeah, so this is all casting sand from the... <laughs> Holy shit. Quality is job one, baby. Gonna move one of y'all's light because I need to look at my finger real quick. So this is a mix of sand and rusty material. It's gummy as well, so I think do the dirty and ooh, it's like all up in there. Cylinder walls. Shoo. That's honestly the worst one I've seen. I thought the 460 I'm working on was bad. <laughs> I've been blowing dust and sand out of those water ports for weeks. Well, I'm uh, gonna need to clean that up some more. Might take a vacuum and try and suck some of that stuff out of there. Uh, then we need to take a wire brush and clean this bore up really good. Then we can smack the new freeze plug in it. That's my cooling. I forgot it makes a vacuum. Oops. <laughs> and then we got the cardboard now. That's enough of that. gone in I wire wheeled the uh, bore there clean it up looks pretty good I don't see any uh, ridges or anything that would cause me a problem so I'm gonna take a paper towel and clean all the moisture off that I can and I'm gonna stick the paper towel in and drop it down beneath the hole try and soak up as much of the coolant that's right there so it stops dripping momentarily all right, so you can take your core plug, and if you're really anal, you can try and line the letters up so that it's upright and stuff. I'm going to try to, but I don't really care. So I'm going to set it on my socket that fits pretty close, and I have Loctite thread lock and sealer. It's not like red or blue. It's meant to seal the threads. And I'm going to put a hefty dab all around it, make sure it runs down my fingers. Right, and I'm going to snake this up in there. And then I'm going to smack it with a hammer. Alright. That is a little far in on one side. So I want to try and come and knock this corner a little bit. Getting the hammer in the right spot is uh... All right, that's good. So I'm gonna clean up the thread sealer. Alright, that looks good to me. So that stuff doesn't really need any cure. It'll cure by the time it gets pressure on it anyway. So just refill the coolant and put the starter back on, we're good to go. 
All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about coolant because this is gonna be something that uh, we're gonna hear a lot from a lot of different people on. What I'm gonna say is real simple. What you should do today in this day and age is just go down and buy the 50-50 stuff that you can get down at the local auto parts store to put in the car. Bottom line, it's gonna be the best mix for what you're doing. Now, which brand do I recommend? No, you're not, you're not pulling me into that. I am not gonna recommend a brand. I have my own personal preferences and I'm not gonna tell you what those are because I don't want to color your opinion of whatever it is that you're gonna buy. But if you're gonna do this, just do the 50-50 mix, get it over with because it's gonna be actually exactly what you need in order to get the right amount of coolant in this car and the right mixture of coolants to do. The problem we're having with the sand in this, I'm gonna probably have to go in and do a couple of change out on this. Now let's just say I wanted to put water in there. Do I wanna put tap water in there? In the larger sense of things, absolutely not. And I've read a couple of different things about doing distilled water straight up and read a couple of things about doing soft water straight up. Oddly enough, there's a company out there that does radiator stuff that recommends soft water rather than distilled because of the ionization. No, I don't, I don't care. Because it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it's one of those kind of things where you're gonna wanna go in the end and do the 50-50 mix on it. And that's just the stuff you buy down at the store. I'm not going to go off into all the problems that you can run into with distilled water and tap water because if you live in an area with a hard water, anyway, just do the 50-50 mix. You'll be a lot happier. One other thing you can do to make sure your cooling system's in really good shape and stays that way is you can get a uh, radiator cap from the guys at National Parts Depot that is a sacrificial anode on the cap. It has a wire with a sacrificial anode that sits down inside the radiator and it will pull those kind of impurities that can cause you issues into the sacrificial anode or whatever it does. I'm not a scientist, nor do I play one on TV. So you'll just have to understand that I've used them before and they actually work pretty darn well. It's not a factory looking cap, but I'm willing to sacrifice that in order to keep my original radiators in good nick. So there you go. Little tech tip for you right before we button this bad boy up. That was actually a lot easier you got schmutz on your face again. On your side. There, it's gone. <laughs> it's <so whatever. laughs> that was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, core plugs aren't. They're not bad, but it depends on position, too, because yeah. any of the other front core plugs, you almost have to pick everything up, pull the motor mounts out of it, yep. and it becomes a much bigger pain in the butt. Yeah, you either pull the block or you put a jack under it, lift the engine, pull the mounts. And, and then, you still, that's a lot of work. you're still fighting around a cross member. It's almost one of those kind of things where is it easier to just go ahead and pull the headers out of it, pull the engine out of the engine bay, and do it outside the engine yeah. bay. But then while you're there, you must <laughs> Yeah, that, that whole yeah, that spiel. Thing. <laughs> now, we, we stopped ourselves today. Yeah. Because you and I were talking about it off camera, about going in and doing the other core plugs. Yeah. Because of what we found in that, that core that, plug. That much sand, to, if it was my car and I was keeping it, I'm pulling the other. I'm never surprised anymore about what I see coming out of the yeah. factories during that time period. This is actually, I think, the original engine in this car because yeah. it is a D4 block. Yep. So that tells me that this is probably the block that came on this one. If I were keeping this car, I would check the heads and see which heads he's got on it yep. because if he's got the D4 heads, we could put the C9 heads on there, pick up a little bit of compression, yep. and it would run a whole lot better because it's got the bigger valves in it. Yep. But we're not no, doing no it. EGRs. Do. Yeah. That's not happening. I'm keeping my D9 heads. I'm not getting rid of them. Or C9, excuse me. Beyond that, I think I saw what you were talking about. Off camera, you'd mentioned something on the core plugs about needing the, that more shoulder on them. I, I see yeah. why you say that yeah. now. Yeah. Because that one's in there a little cockeyed. I yeah. think it's fine. Yeah, I couldn't see the far side of the socket when I was hitting it. And, and that longer shoulder would help keep yeah. it in there and lined up straight. Yeah. And it just gives you more wiggle room to have it a little bit cockeyed, but fine. Right. The other thing we didn't talk about too is the fact that in the original engines, they were using a mild steel core plug. Yeah. And in the later stuff that you get now, they're all stainless steel yeah. plugs. So they're gonna hold up a lot better and a yeah. lot longer. Or brass. Or brass. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, there are, yeah, they had a brass kit, but it was for AMC, yeah. weirdly. Yeah. I'm sure. There's a lot of call for AMC yeah. stuff right here yeah. in the Carolinas. I'm sure somewhere else there is, but like I can think of like two. <laughs> like, like Cuba or this. <laughs> Where they'll put anything in anything. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I guess that's it. That was all we really wanted to do today is get the core plug done. And so that now we're not going to be spewing coolant every time yeah. we try to drive the car. I'm honestly amazing to blow out. 
Like I poke a hole in it with my finger. I'm amazed. We took that power run. Yeah. I'll show you a little bit of footage right now of the power run we did in one of our earlier videos, not realizing how bad that core yeah. plug was. It's a wonder it didn't go, whoo, and there'd be this stream of crap back behind the car. It's got some power. <laughs> Maybe it would have pushed all the junk out. Yeah. Yeah. All the <laughs> on that side of the block would just whole back of the yeah. car would be black. Yep. My shirt's a mess. Anyway, you guys be kind to each other, love on each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time on oh, Auto Resto Mod. Mod. Now I gotta get cooling. Mm -hmm. I gotta get lunch. Yeah. Darren says yes. he's feeling sick to his I, stomach. I have the hangies. <laughs> he's sick to his stomach. <laughs> I'm the only one that's okay. I must have done a proper breakfast this morning. Bye. <laughs>